Hi everyone. Welcome to second episode of Audiology SLP Talk with Sunil and Shruti. We are extremely happy to know that you all have liked and appreciated our first video on Audiology SLP Talk. So this video is going to contain the following topic. First we'll share a brief talk on barotrauma by Dr. Vikas Agrawal. Followed by that recent updates in audiology and SLP field. Then we'll move on to article discussion one from audiology and one from speech language pathology. First will be intraoperative ASSR. Second will be brain and computer interference technology. At the end we'll be giving you a list of upcoming conferences and workshops. So let us begin our episode with a talk on barotrauma. The talk is shared by Dr. Vikas Agrawal. Dr. Vikas Agrawal is an expert ENT surgeon from Mumbai and also a good friend of mine. Hi. Flying is a very common activity today and many people experience ear blocks during flight. So let us see today what happens in the ear when we fly, when we take off, when we land and how we can prevent it. Our ears are connected to the nose by a tube called the eustachian tube. This tube helps to equalize the pressure on both sides of the eardrum. So when we are taking off, the atmospheric pressure outside decreases. That means the pressure outside the eardrum decreases. And at this point, the eustachian tube opens to equalize the pressure on each side. If this does not happen, you can close your nose and try to swallow, which will help to take out the air from your ears and make the pressure equal. On the other hand, when we are landing, the pressure outside increases. So at this point of time, the eustachian tube again has to open so that more air goes inside the middle ear. Now, if this does not happen, you can do Valsalva in which you close your nose and mouth and try blowing air through your nose. This pushes the air inside the middle ear and equalizes the pressure. If you are flying with a cold in which your eustachian tube is blocked, then you can land up with a barotrauma or a pain in the ear. So you realize how important it is not to fly with an active cold. So you must take anti-cold medicines in consultation with the doctor at least a few days ahead of the schedule so that you don't get this problem. Thank you. I hope the knowledge shared by Dr. Vikas Agrawal will help us in counseling our patients who are suffering from barotrauma due to flights. Asha has shared a blog on childhood apraxia of speech. We'd like to share that with you. At least few of us would have dealt with childhood apraxia of speech, so we know that it's a rare and complex disorder to deal with. Therefore, Identifying them and correctly diagnosing them is very important because we might end up in giving them a regular speech therapy which might not help these children. At National Conference of Apraxia, Mr. D. Fish has specified that don't just teach the speech to the children with apraxia of speech. Rather, we should keep working on movement gestures and sound sequences. This will definitely ensure a natural sound production which will lead to a positive outcomes from the speech therapy. So here is a study from Florida. It is published in Journal of Neuroscience. So what they have found is exercises can prevent age related hearing loss. They have done study on sedentary mice and active mice. So what they have found the mice which did not do exercise or mice which was not active lost their important auditory structures such as hair cells and striped capillaries in a faster rate compared to the uh, active counterparts. The researchers have not pinpointed the exact reason behind this. However, it might be that because of exercise, some growth related factors or beneficial some other factors may be getting released into the bloodstream or else it can also be that because of exercise, the negative factors are being attenuated. So we have a hope that if the research get continued in human beings, we might have a future to look for prospectuses. Our friend Mr. Nitin Kurian, who is working in the US, wants to share an article on brain-computer interface technology with us today. So let's hear from him. 
Hi friends, welcome to Audiology and SMP Talk. Today I'm going to talk about a technology known as Brain Computer Interface Technology, which is nothing but collecting brain impulses to communicate directly using computer. So this is also known as Mind Machine Interface or Direct Neural Interface. So the study which I'm going to talk about is by Rasio and colleagues. They did it in 2015. So what they did was very interesting. They collected the brain impulses uh, using P300 signals and used this PCA technology to, uh, to modify that as a communication tool, as a high-tech AAC, AAC technology. So here, they selected eight individuals with, individuals with ALS, amyotropic lateral sclerosis, and they used this PCA technology in two different modes. The first PCA technology was using P300 signals. They gave a computer monitor, and the subjects were supposed to select letters and make words to communicate what they want to wanted to like for example if they want apple they were supposed to look at the alphabets and with the uh, technology pca technology computer could analyze and uh, get the word correctly from the brain impulses the second technology was a combination of pci with assistive technology that is nothing but from the brain directly collects the p300 signals and combines with assistive technology to move cursor and click the picture so the first one was reading the second one was to move cursor and click the picture what they want to communicate the third mo mode was just simple manual communication using the residual uh, motor movements to move a cursor using a manual uh, switch and also manual buttons so that was the simple and the traditional conventional AAC mode so all the eight individuals with ALS they reported the second technology that is nothing but combining the PCA technology with the assistive technology that is nothing but moving the cursor with the eye gaze by collecting direct P300 signals using the electrode cap and select the picture from the computer screen that was a preferable technology among pre preferable mode by all, by all the eight individuals when they participated in the study. So this is something new for us, the PCA technology that is nothing but directly collecting the brain impulses to communicate. So this is going to be really helpful among individuals with uh, uh, you know, high uh, new motor neuron disorders, ALS and also Lachlan syndrome and other neuro neurological conditions. So I hope this is a new information for you guys and stay tuned to get more information and more research articles. All the best. See you guys later. Thank you Nitin for sharing this article with us. We appreciate your contribution. So next article is from Audiology. This article is shared by our friend Mr. Kanad Manke. Mr. Kanad Manke is pursuing his PhD in UK. This article talks about intraoperative ASSR. So let's have a look into it. The title of the article is Intraoperative Auditory Steady State Monitoring During Surgery in Cerebellopondine Ankle for Estimation of Postoperative Hearing Classes. This is by the following authors and it is published in Journal of Neuroscience, October 2016. From many years, we have been using brainstem auditory evoked potentials for intraoperative monitoring of the auditory nerve. However, it does not provide enough information about the expected post-operative hearing quality and speech perception. Therefore, this study investigates the application of ACSR for intraoperative estimation of hearing classes. They have included 43 patients undergoing surgery for vestibular schoenoma for the study. ACSR measurements were performed at the beginning and end of surgical procedure. These are the parameters used for the SSR measurements. From the results obtained, they have arrived at the conclusions that ASSR robustly estimate the hearing classes in patients under total intravenous anesthesia even when using short measurement durations. So on the basis of these findings, continuous intraoperative auditory monitoring could become a promising alternative or it can be used along with brainstem auditory evoked potentials. Thank you Kanad. We appreciate your contribution towards our channel. AYJ Mumbai has organized a workshop on disability information line. 
which is on 25th November 2016. Next webinar by Isha is on 26th November 2016. The topic for the webinar is updates in NIHL pathophysiology and laser noise in young people from 2:30 pm to 4 pm. PJ Chandigarh has organized workshop on 20th January 2017 and topic is update on auditory neuropathy and spectrum disorders. Thank you for watching our second episode. Hope it was helpful to you all. We would like to thank our contributors Dr. Vikas Agrawal ENT Surgeon Mumbai, Mr. Kanad Manke from UK and Mr. Nidin Kurian working in US. We would also like to thank our friend Mr. Amit Taide for their support. Everyone are welcome to contribute towards our video. So our contact details are down to the video provided. So you can you can contact us through our email ID, which is audiologyslptalk at gmail dot com. Please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe our video. Subscribe button is down below our video. Please do subscribe to the channel to get the updates from our channel. Thank you once again for watching this video. See you next time through our next episode.